Hi, this is Dr. K from my medical school, and today we're going to talk about the next step in the oxidative metabolic pathway, which is pyruvate decarboxylation. We talked about glycolysis and pyruvate production in a separate video, so make sure to check that out. All right, let's get to it and talk about pyruvate decarboxylation. So pyruvate decarboxylation is a step that occurs prior to the citric acid cycle and after glycolysis. It's important because it allows for the production of acetyl-CoA, which you need in the citric acid cycle. This reaction is an irreversible reaction and actually is an accumulation of many small reactions. What is so special about this step is that the enzyme complex called the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, which helps run this reaction, is actually composed of five different enzymes. Three of these enzymes are involved in the actual reaction and two of which are regulatory enzymes. In addition, for the reaction to take place, the pyruvate that is produced in the cytoplasm after glycolysis is transported into the mitochondrial matrix where pyruvate decarboxylation occurs. So here we have the overall step of pyruvate decarboxylation. A pyruvate molecule undergoes some very small successive reactions that help form acetyl-CoA, which is used in the Krebs or citric acid cycle. As I mentioned, the enzyme complex involved is the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. So what are the components of the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex? Well, the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex is composed of three main enzymes. These enzymes are pyruvate decarboxylase, dihydrolipoyl transacetylase, and dihydrolipoyl dehydrogenase. The enzyme complex also contains a regulatory enzymes as well that are involved in activation and inactivation of the enzyme complex. These enzymes are protein kinase and phosphoprotein phosphatase. Cofactors are needed for making this complex to run, and these include thiamine pyrophosphate, otherwise known as TPP, and lipoic acid. So a pyruvate attaches to the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. The first enzyme that acts is a decarboxylase. As the name suggests, a decarboxylase removes a carboxyl group and releases it as CO2 or carbon dioxide. At the same time, the cofactor thiamine pyrophosphate attaches to the decarboxylated pyruvate. Here is a key point. Thiamine pyrophosphate, or TPP, consists of a thiamine molecule. When patients develop severe thiamine deficiency, this can lead to central nervous system failure because without thiamine, TPP cannot be formed and thus metabolism cannot proceed because of a lack of thiamine pyrophosphate. Now the newly formed molecule with TPP undergoes a replacement reaction where the TPP is replaced with a lipoic acid sulfhydryl groups as shown here. Now, I want to make another key point that each of these reactions occurs in rapid succession. So there's not enough time for any one of these products to really build up. With the new lipoic acid group attached, dihydrolipoyl transacetylase removes this lipoid acid group and adds coenzyme A to, to the acetyl group, creating acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA then enters the Krebs cycle. Now, the lipoid acid group that is removed from the acetyl group has to be regenerated for further reactions. And it does this by being oxidized by FAD. FAD pulls the hydrogen groups off and the lipoid acid group returns to its previous state, ready for another reaction. FADH2 produced is further oxidized by NAD to produce NADH2. This step is facilitated by the dihydrolipoyl dehydrogenase enzyme. The important feature here is that to produce acetyl-CoA, you need niacin to produce NAD. If you are niacin deficient, you will lack NAD and thus be unable to complete metabolism. In addition, arsenic is a poison that acts on enzymes like pyruvate dehydrogenase that require lipoid acid as a cofactor. So it causes these steps to cease and stop cellular metabolism. Now, how is the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex regulated? Well, the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex is mainly regulated by the addition or subtraction of a phosphate group. When the phosphate is added to the enzyme complex, it turns the complex off. When a phosphate group is removed, it turns the enzyme complex on. Pyruvate kinase is involved in turning pyruvate dehydrogenase complex off by adding a phosphate group. Production of a lot of ATP acetyl-CoA or NADH causes the enzyme pyruvate kinase to turn off. Now, 
This makes sense. If you're producing too much energy but are not using it and your body starts collecting it, your body doesn't want to waste this energy, so it tries to slow down metabolism. At the same time, if you start building up pyruvate, CoA, and NAD, indicating a low level of energy, then these decrease the activity of pyruvate kinase, leading to greater PDC activity and greater energy production. In addition, phosphoprotein phosphatase is involved in the removal of a phosphate group from the inactive form of PDC, leading to its activation. Calcium is a known trigger for increasing the activity of phosphoprotein phosphatase. Why? Well, in muscle, calcium increases in the cell when muscles are actively contracting. So if muscle is doing work, they need more energy. So this tells your cells to increase phosphoprotein phosphatase activity so more energy is made. Well, that was a brief review of the pyruvate decarboxylation reaction. The key points are understanding the enzyme complex and how it turns off or on, and what are its components. If you like this video, make sure to give it a like. Make sure to share this video with your friends on Facebook and Twitter. You can follow us on Twitter at iMedSchool and on Facebook at iMedicalSchool. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. This is Dr. K from iMedical School, and I'll see you next time.